and we looked at um, what I want to do today is cover section 5 on saving money and we looked at simple interest and that included things like borrowing and saving and that's fine and it works but a lot of what we see in real life isn't simple interest right so like if you're borrowing from a friend or something you might use simple interest but anything to do with banks all uses compound interest um, and so what we want to do is look at what happens if I save money where compound interest is involved and um, in section four we looked at compound interest and that included saving money but in section four when we talked about compound interest we were putting a lump sum of money in at the beginning and that's not what we always do with money, right? Sometimes when you're saving money, you say, oh, okay, I'm going to put away a little bit every week or every month or something like that. So that's the situation we want to talk about here. What happens if I want to um, put in, uh, put money in regularly? Okay. So maybe you're taking money out of your, your paycheck or something like that or saving up for a car or something, and you say, okay, every time I get paid, I'm going to put money away, or every month after I pay my bills, I put the extra away. Okay. So here's a formula for um, what you'll end up with over a given period of time. Now, if you're putting in a variable amount, right, like if I pay all my bills at the end of the month, and once all my bills are paid, I put the remainder into an account, that changes from month to month, and then you can't really predict what you're going to end up with. So what we're looking at is putting in the same amount regularly, the same amount at the same time interval, okay? So more like pulling money out of your paycheck for retirement. And we have two formulas. Uh, it's really the same formula. It's just algebraically one of them is solved for A, if I want to know what the ending amount is, or the other one is solved for this PMT variable uh, that stands for payment, right? What, how much do I need to put in? What's, what's my deposit amount or payment amount that I need to reach a certain goal? Okay, so we're using a lot of the same variables that we had before, A, R, N, T, and this one is new, and that's just what our, our regular monthly payment is. Now, what you'll notice is absent here is a principal. We're not starting with money in the account, right? If I'm saving by putting money away every month, then, then we don't have a starting amount, right? So um, for most of these, use P equals zero, and I'll, and I'll write that when we're, when we're doing this. And we can, I'll also go through examples of using this on our Finance Solver app. Okay, so suppose you want to save m money for retirement by investing $50 a month into an IRA, right, in a retirement account. Well, suppose that the IRA earns 5% interest. Um, how much are we going to have in the account after 35 years? How much of that comes from deposits and how much of that is from in interest? And what is what percent of that ending amount came from interest. So we have a, a bunch of questions to answer here. Okay. So first what I want to do is I want to go back through and I want to write down all of my information in symbols. So we're going to be investing $50 a month. So that tells me that that's my monthly uh, deposit. Okay. 5% interest. So my interest rate R is 0 0.05. Okay after 35 years, so T is 35, okay? The a month part also tells me that the N is 12, because there are 12 months in a year, and we want to find the ending amount A. Or if you're using the finance solver, FV for future value. Okay, notice that P, or the present value, is zero. We're not starting with any money in that account. We're, we're saying, okay, I just want to start saving 50 bucks a month and see where that goes. Okay, so since I want to find the ending amount A, if we're using our formulas, we're going to use the A equals formula, right? So uh, we'll just write that down. So we have our payment, double parenthesis, 1 plus R over N to the NT minus 1 all over r over n. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my calculator and I'm going to plug in those numbers. So our payment was, let's clear this out, our payment was 50 bucks. Okay, 1 plus r over n, so 1 plus 0 0.05 
divided by 12 to the power of nt, so we have 12 times 35. The minus 1 is not in the exponent, so be careful about that. Divided by, open parenthesis for the denominator, 0 0.05 divided by 12. Okay, so we end up with $56,804.62. Almost, almost remembered it all. 62 cents, there we go. Okay, if we use the finance app on our calculator instead, okay, remember the capital N is little n times t, so we want 12 times 35. That's the total number of deposits we make. The I percent, we leave it as a percent, so enter 5%, not 0 0.05. Present value is zero. Um, the payment PMT is 50. FV will come back to, and this P over Y, right, payments per year, that's little n, that's 12. Okay, so we go back up to future value, hit the green alpha, and then solve, so it solves for it, and I get that same number, 56,804.62. Notice, and we talked about this before, but just as a reminder, you get a negative on here, because when we put the money into our account. If we count that as positive, when we pull it out, they count that as negative. That's just an accounting practice, um, but we're not going to make use of that. Don't write anything as negative numbers uh, in this unit. Okay, so that answers the first question. Um, how much will you have at the end of 35 years? Okay, so After 35 years, we will have $56,804.62. So, on to the next question. How much of that is from your deposits and how much of that is from interest? Okay, so I'm going to first find out how much comes from deposits. We're depositing $50 a month, 12 times a year for 35 years. So I'm just going to take 50 times 12 times 35, and I get 21,000. So we deposited 21,000 over the course of 35 years. So our deposits is 30. Well, we'll circle the whole thing. Okay, the total money in the account is going to be the amount that we put in, so our deposits, plus the interest that the bank gives us. That's the only money that's there in the account. So if I want to find out how much comes from interest, what I can do is I can just subtract, right? The interest is just the total minus the deposits. Okay, so what we can do is just find the interest by subtracting. We're not using a, like a formula here. So I just take the 56,804.62 and I subtract 21,000 and I get 35,804.62. So that's how much comes from interest. Okay. And then the last question, what percentage of the balance is interest? So I just want to find out what percentage of my balance of 56,804 is 35,804.62. Okay. So we've answered this question in unit one. What percent, um, sorry, percent of, so of the balance, so x times 56,804.62 is means equal, and then the interest, 35,804.62. So if I want to find x, I'm going to divide both sides by the 56,804.62. Okay, so same technique that we had back in 
section one. We translate to a math equation and then solve it. Okay, so I'm just going to type this into my calculator and I get 0 0.630311. Or we can we can round that. To, well, I'll round to 63 percent, right? Even rounded to one decimal, it's 63 percent. Okay. Okay. So the thing I want you to note here at the bottom, when we're computing interest, we're going to follow the same procedure that we did over here. The total amount is going to be principal, right, or deposits plus interest. So the interest is going to be the difference. Interest is the total minus the deposits. So don't use the simple interest formula just because it's a formula that says interest equals. Okay. Let's look at another example. Suppose we want to have a million dollars in 30 years. Uh, we will save the same amount every month and earn 6% interest on our savings. How much do we need to save and how much of the million comes from interest? Okay. So here I want to have a future value or ending amount of $1 million in 30 years. So time is 30. Okay, We're going to save the same amount every month. So n is 12. And it's this saving the same amount every month that tells me that I'm using the formulas from this section, right? that I'm doing this, this saving formula, as opposed to the compound interest formula from the section uh, before this. Because the compound interest formula, we put a lump sum at the beginning, and then we save money and see what happens to it. Here, we're, we're putting the same amount in every month. Okay. The rate is 0 0.06, or I percent is 6. Okay. And we want to find the payment, or deposit amount. Right. Our present value is 0. Okay. So here, if I'm using the formulas, because I want to find the payment, we want to use the PMT equals formula. I'll write it down again. So we have A, R over N, all over double parenthesis, 1 plus R over N to the NT minus 1. Okay. And I'll go ahead and type that into my calculator. So the A is 1 million. Okay. R is 0 0.06 divided by 12 divided by double parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 30. And then make sure not in the exponent, but we want to subtract 1 close the parentheses for the denominator, and we get 995.51 if we round to the nearest cent. Okay. Again, if instead of using that formula, if I'm going to use the finance solver, okay, my capital N is N times T, so 12 times 30. The interest rate is 6%. Make sure you leave it as a percent. Present value is 0. I don't know the payment, so I'll just skip over it for now. Um, I want my future value to be a million. And it's monthly, so I'm going to leave those as 12. So go back over to the payment. Alpha, enter to solve. And I get the same 995.51 that we had a minute ago. Okay. So that is our deposit amount that we need. How much of that, um, let's see, how much of this comes from interest? So what we need to do is a couple of parts. First, let's figure out how much comes from deposits so that we can use the same technique that we had before. The interest is the total minus the deposits. So first, we're going to compute the deposits. Okay, we're saving 995.51. 12 times a year for 30 years. Okay. So we end up with $358,383.60.
So our interest is the difference, 1 million minus the amount that we deposited, 358, 38360. And when I subtract, I get 641,000. $616.40. Okay. So one of the things I want you to notice here is that because this is a very long period of time, right, like 30 years, um, we didn't put in the majority of our million dollars, the bank did, right? So over a long period of time, compound interest really adds up. Over a short period of time, it's it's very similar to like the percent it is right so it you know it doesn't it ch doesn't change things by much okay but over over time that's the compounding then you know makes a real difference um, what I want to do I didn't I didn't really include this as as a, an example on the notes but I want to just do a quick comparison of um, the difference between making regular payments and uh, putting a lump sum at the beginning. So let me just ask another question. Suppose you want to end up with a million dollars. And you want to have that in 25 years. Okay. Um, and we're going to say that whatever you're using to save your money, you're going to get 6% interest. All right. I'm going to give you two options to think about. We'll say option A and option B. So option A, we're going to put a lump sum of money into our, our account now and let it save up over time. Okay, option B, we're going to make monthly deposits. All right. So here's the question. How much does our lump sum have to be? Or how much do our deposits have to be? Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is to point your attention to the difference here. If I'm putting one chunk of money at the beginning, one lump sum, that's when we use the compound interest formulas. If I'm making regular deposits, that's when we use the savings formula. So I just wanted to, first of all, point your attention to how to identify the difference between those. And then what I want to do is I want to show you how, well, if you use the, your, you know, your finance solver, it doesn't really matter all that much, okay? Because um, you just put in your information in and you solve for what you're looking for. So we said we're doing this monthly for 25 years. So monthly is 12, 25 years. So 12 times 25, 6% interest. Okay. I want to end up with a million dollars and we're doing monthly. So 12, 12 uh, payments per year and compounds per year. Okay. So the difference is if I'm depositing as a lump sum now, I'm making no payments and I want to find out how much I have to deposit at the beginning. What's my present value? So if I solve there, I get $223,965.68. Okay. 
if instead I want to find out what my monthly payment is, I have zero in there at the beginning, and I just go down to the payment and solve there. Okay, so I don't really need to pick formulas, I just pick what is the variable I'm looking for. And here we need 144, sorry, $1,443 and one cent. Okay. And maybe just to give you a comparison, I'm going to compute the total deposits. And you can think for a second, maybe pause and think about it. Are my total deposits going to be more than or less than $223,000 and why? Okay. So here's how to sort of predict that. When I make a lump sum, I'm putting this money in at the beginning. All of my money is earning interest for a full 25 years. Okay. So I'm going to get a lot of interest. If I'm making monthly deposits, my first deposit is getting interest for 25 years. My second deposit is getting interest for 24 years and 11 months. My last deposit is getting interest for one month. So my money that I'm putting in isn't getting interest for the full 25 years, right? Not all of it. Okay. So I would expect that I'm getting less interest on each dollar I put in. So if I add up all the dollars that I put in, I'm going to have to contribute more to end up with that million. So here, this should be, this should be higher. So if I look at my deposits, right, $1,443.01, 12 times a year for 25 years, okay, I have to contribute a total of $432,903. So it takes, you know, about twice as much, and that shouldn't be too much of a surprise because, you know, half of my money is getting interest early on and half of it's not. I, I don't know. It's not quite like that, but that's a little bit of an oversimplification. But, you know, the, the idea is that, that, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting more interest when all of my money is getting interest from the beginning. Okay, um, I think that that's it for the savings formulas.